Oh, what another beautiful day at my summer cabin in the winter, working on programming the Naboo to do cool stuff. <laughs> What's up, my Nabooers? I got uh, something cool to show you today. Pretty excited. So I set out to make a BIOS for CPM so that we can run CPM on the old boo here. And uh, I decided I was gonna write it in C, believe it or not. I thought, you know what? Let's try this out and see if it can be done. Now, given there's a ton of assembler still in here, but we don't have to worry about that. A lot of it actually is surprisingly C. So that's kind of neat. I had to uh, naked all the functions, of course, and <laughs> take uh, the registers and throw them into memory addresses so I can address them in C, but it worked really well. Um, so what I ended up doing is building it uh, last night and then I didn't really get a chance to test it too much. Uh, I woke up this morning and thought, hey, let's give it a little shot. So before the um, CPM loads, what happens is there's a bootloader and let's take a little quick here. A little looky look at the bootloader. Um, let's see here. C programs loader. So what the loader is going to do is it goes to uh, the internet adapter. Okay, right here. And it just asks for two files. It asks for the BIOS file. That's going to be what the NABU is actually missing. It doesn't have a BIOS. It just has a ROM and it loads the BIOS when it loads the main menu. But that's a customized version of the BIOS. And then we here have uh, CPM 22.bin. Uh, so it'll load that as well. And once it loads these two files, then it'll launch um, CPM bin and the CCP and it'll do its own thing. So what I'll do here is uh, let's zoom into the old TV here because this is what I'm using at my cabin and I'm just going to hit reset refresh on the NABU. So what you're going to see happen is this is the BIOS getting the file from internet adapter and it's grabbing the other file. There it goes. And then we just boot into uh, CPM. So right now it's actually loading off the disk. I should put some sort of indicator on there, but there we go. So that loaded pretty quick. Actually, that loaded about the same speed as a floppy disk from using main. So we can DIR here, and there's our file. So the next step I'm gonna be working on is um, modifying the CCP so that this does 40 column mode. So it'll be nice, easier to work in 40 column mode. And yeah, it's uh, I'm pretty excited that this is <laughs> this come along really well. So. Where am I getting the files from? Uh, let me explain that a little bit to you. So the C, the, because there's no local storage on here, it's actually using the remote file system. So it's actually using the file system on your computer. So in my computer, in a folder called um, documents, now it's gonna vary based upon your operating system, but documents, NABU, network adapter, store. And this is configurable in the settings of the network adapter under uh, RetroNet, you get a local store folder here. Okay, so what will happen is you will put into this file, uh, into this folder here, disk images. And the disk images are going to be, um, I'll, I'll give you the definition files to create them. And I'll post that up online once I get all this going for you guys. But zero is disk number A, one is disk number B. I should probably change that so it's actually A, B, C, D. I mean, that's not a, a big deal. Um, I'll probably end up doing that. Like there's a lot of tweaks I said I have to actually do still. And how I'm creating the disk images here is actually John, John's basement, if John's watching this, I'm sure he is. Um, he was actually a great help watching his videos. I was able to uh, to get the an example um, format that was big enough for a lot of images and he went through it and explained how to get the actual um, the actual uh, dimensions for the disk. So what I did here is if I can type with one hand, do what I do. Oh, <laughs> let's see here, disk, defs. Okay, so at the top of my disk defs here, um, I have Naburn, <laughs> it's actually Nabu RN, but it's funny that I keep calling it Naburn even in my head when I write it. Um, so this is how you create, this is the definitions that you'll use to create uh, disks. And then I'm using what John um, also outlined in one of, in his uh, CPM for retro, his retro computer project, is there's the CPM tools. So 
I'll post all this online once I get it, like I said, but CPM tools allows you to actually uh, LS an image, um, create copy files to an image, everything you need. So we can create images, we can put Zork on there, we can put any software we want on to images and uh, they'll just run. And in addition to all this as well is um, the Z88 compiler will generate images files as well. So we'll be able to uh, create image files, map them right to the, uh, to the drive and off you go. And let's see, there's a few other things I did inside the code. Like for example, if you eject a disk, so let's just change the name of the disk here. Um, I'll call this cloud so I don't forget. And let's jump back into our screen here and oops, oops. Oh, my delete key doesn't work yet. Okay, there we go. So as you can see here, I can't read the disk because it's been ejected. Cool, right? So that's pretty awesome. Um, let's see here. Let's put this disk back, cloud. We'll rename this back to zero. Okay, and that should just start working again. But um, what else was I gonna say here before I let you guys go? Um, you know what? I can't remember. I think I think that's it. I think I'm just really excited that uh, that we got this far. If I do remember something, I'll just put up another video. How's that sound? Um, yeah. Anyway, so thanks thanks John John's basement or whatever. I can't, I don't know what what he likes to be called. John Winham, I think Winnin Winnin is that what his name is? But I'm sure he'll see this video. And yeah, so thanks so much. If you actually want to see a really cool video series, um, he's been a great help. So John's basement. He did a whole series on CPM. And the troubles that I ran into um, actually was interesting. He was able to help me with some of that by watching some of his, some of his videos. There was a few gotchas, not many. The BIOS is pretty straightforward for CPM, uh, at least 2.2. I can modify this for three eventually. Okay, okay, so I will have this online probably pretty soon. Um, I mean, I, you know, like I said, I'm out here at my cabin right now, so I'm enjoying being outside and spending some wintry days. Um, <laughs> but I tell you, I'm really excited to get you guys online with this. And the next step after um, having access to the drives from uh, over the computer, the next step is for me to be able to make the drives actually read folders. So you actually just put files and folders and I can generate the, uh, the index and everything in real time. And I mean, I could do that and I'm really excited about doing it, but I think it's, it's going to be a little future project. And then the next step of course, too, is, um, to make it so that we can all share these disc images and we can, you know, just turn your Naboo on and select images from anyone around the world. I'm going to create a whole new menu because what I can do, and this is super exciting. I know this video is long. I'm sorry, everyone, but I'm just really excited about this is that we can create CPM programs that will actually instruct the internet adapter to do certain things. So we can have, for example, a CD command, which will actually virtually change the directory, just like how a user system on, on CPM works, but we can change, virtually change the directory and we can virtually change, um, and we can physically change drives too. We can have even a, a change drive command, you know, so we can say, I want to map drive D now to a different physical file. So these are all things that can be done as commands because we can instruct the internet adapter to do it. That's super cool, right? Uh, we can throw retro OS uh, entirely on here as well. It's an operating system. I don't, I don't even know if I did a video on that. I think I might have shown it really quick, but there's an operating system. Well, actually, it's a command shell. It's a CCP for CPM, and it has built into it some really cool stuff like RetroNet, which I was working on, so you can actually chat while you're at a, a CPM prompt. I know, I'm just getting carried away here. <laughs> okay, I will see you guys all in the next video.